In this video, we're going to talk about what we call integers, opposites, and absolute values. Before we get to those, we want to develop what we call our number sets, or our sets of numbers. We're going to start with our most broad set of numbers, and then we're going to dwindle down to some that are a little less broad. Um, for instance, um, one of the broadest set of uh, numbers is our real numbers. A real number is a number that can be plotted on a number line. A number like 2, a number like 5, a, le a number like 2.3, a number like 5.8, or we can have, each have fractions, a number like 2 fifths. All right. Remember, your number line extends in both directions. Some people think of the middle of the number line having 0, and you can count by 1s, you can count by 2s. It doesn't really matter. But you can place your numbers on your number line. And it actually extends in both directions. But like, let's say I have this number 2 here, and I wanted to plot it on my number line. Then all I have to do is go to 2 on my number line and put a, a dot there where I see the 2. All right. So any number that we can put on the real number line is called a real number. In addition to real numbers, more specifically, we have natural numbers. And natural numbers are those, those counting numbers that we, we start off when we're really young learning numbers. One, two, three, four, so on and so forth. Uh, those are our natural numbers. Our whole numbers include our counting numbers with zero. So when we talk about whole numbers, we start at zero and then we include our counting numbers. One, two, three, four, so on and so forth. All right, and I'm just going to put a, some dots to, since I have this in order. All right, before we get to our next number set, which is our integers, we want to talk about what we call opposites. Um, opposites are numbers that are the same distance from zero. All right, so I have my number line up here with zero, one, two, and three. And actually, this number line extends in both directions. So I started here by putting this 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 increment here, this increment here, and this increment here. Well, if I start off to the left of zero, and I can include numbers that are not positive but negative. For instance, this will be negative one, I have negative two, and I have negative three here. And so if I look at this number line here, two is two units from zero, all right? So the opposite of two would be two units from zero, but in the opposite direction. So one, two units, so it would be negative two. All right. And so what I want to do now is I want to look at a couple of examples where we find the opposites of numbers. All right. This first example, I have three. I want to figure out what the opposite of three is. Well, three is three units from zero. And so the, the number that is opposite three on the other side of zero is going to be negative three. Five is five units from zero, so the number that's opposite from that on the other side of zero will be negative five. Notice here that one is positive, the other is negative. That's the only thing that we can really do with opposites. One's going to be positive, one's going to be negative, but the actual number part is actually going to be the same. So I have a negative 12 here, where the opposite of that is going to be a positive 12. And now we get to zero. Well, zero is zero units from zero. All right, and zero is actually a neutral number. So this one actually doesn't have a solution or you can actually say zero, all right? With these uh, whole numbers and their opposites with zero, we get our next number set, which is called our integers, all right? And our integers are those numbers that I basically had on that number line right there before, all right? Um, so if I, if I start from my left, I can have like negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. And I can go, keep, continue going on in both directions. So I'm going to put some dots here to tell me that I'm continuing to go. All right, these are what we call our integers. This is what we wanted to get to in this section. There are two other uh, number sets. One is called the rational numbers. We're going to get to this more in detail a little bit later. But they're numbers that can be written as fractions. For instance, two-fifths, three-fourths. We can actually have negatives, negative five-sixths. Or we can have whole numbers like three, right? Because three is the same thing as three over one. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. Irrational numbers, we're not going to really talk about these in this class. But they are numbers that can, cannot be written as a fraction. And one of the popular ones that you might remember is a number like pi or a number like the square root of 2 if you've ever seen square roots before. But those are our number sets. And now what we want to do, we know how to do opposites. We know our integers. Now we want, what we want to do is get to some other stuff. 
And the next thing we're going to talk about are inequalities. All right, inequalities are used to compare numbers. All right, they're used to compare numbers. All right, which one's bigger, which one's smaller? All right, we want to compare numbers. This sign to the left, or this first sign here to the left, is a greater than sign. The one uh, to the right of that is greater than or equal to. Under that greater than symbol, I have a less than symbol. And this to the right of that is less than or equal to. Okay, I left a Dan out here. That should be a Dan up there as well. And so we're using these symbols to help us compare numbers, whether it be integers, whole numbers, decimals, what have you. All right. So I have a couple of examples here where we want to fill in the blank with a less than symbol or a greater than symbol. Right. So remember this first one here, that's less than the second one here. That's greater than. All right. And so I have 16 blank 13. Well, we know in actual words, 16 is greater than. And so I'm going to use that greater than symbol. And remember, we always open towards our larger number. So I put a greater than symbol. 3 and negative 10, right? Well, 3 is more on my number line is more to the right than negative 10. That means that 3 is greater than negative 10, all right? Negative 4 and negative 8. Well, negative 4 is more further to the right than negative 8, so this is going to be a greater than as well. Negative 11 and negative 5. Well, negative 11 is to the left more on my number line compared to negative 5, so we're actually going to have a less than symbol. Okay? So we just want to, you know, think about comparing these numbers and always remember that when we have these uh, numbers, whatever's to the right on the number line, if you were to plot it on the number line, is going to be the greater number. Let's look at another topic. The last topic we want to talk about in this section is called absolute value. And basically, my definition of absolute value is an object's distance from zero. All right, numbers distance from zero. All right. Um, the symbol that we use for absolute value is double bars. Um, so we might have something that looks like this with a number in it. That just means absolute value. Tell me the distance this thing is from zero. So I have a couple of examples that says find the absolute value of the following integers. All right, absolute value of eight. Well, if I think about eight on my number line, I'm not going to draw it out, but eight is eight units from zero. So the absolute value of eight has to equal eight. Part B, absolute value of negative five. Well, if I think about negative five, in order for me to plot that on a number line, if you think about it, it's five units from zero. So I get five all right notice that we're talking about distance here and distance is always positive we never go negative three miles to a you know to someone's house or um negative 50 feet um to the next yard i mean you know stuff like that and so what we're going to do here is anytime we have absolute value it's pretty much going to be a positive number or zero the only time it's going to be negative is if I have an example like this, where my negative is on the outside. This is telling me to do the opposite. Remember, those negatives are like opposites. The opposite of the absolute value of 3. Well, we know that the absolute value of 3, 3 is 3 units from 0, so it's going to be 3. But if I want to do the opposite of that, i got to put my negative on there. Okay? And last but not least, I have a negative absolute value of zero. What's the opposite of the absolute value of zero? Well, zero is neutral, so that's going to be zero. All right, this includes our video on integers, absolute values, and opposites.